Yo, what's up guys? Chase the Bro here, and welcome back to another Elden Ring Weapon Showcase. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Stormhawk Axe, a weapon of the Axe class with optimal scaling and strength, but does still get great scaling from dexterity. In fact, this weapon can double as a pure strength weapon or a quality build weapon. So I did first try all my points poured into strength with the minimum dexterity requirement, and it actually gave me a little bit less AR than the stats that I have here. I have the 54 strength, that way when I two-hand it, I'm hitting the 80 strength hard cap for the strength scaling, and then we have the rest of the points poured into dexterity which netted me a little bit more AR. It's not too different, so if you do want to use it on a pure strength build, you definitely can. It's just a little bit more optimized going the strength quality route. As for the choice of armor, I am using a higher poise set than I usually do for the showcases. I feel like it'll benefit the axe. The axe itself is pretty light, so I don't have to pour a lot of points into endurance to be wearing a higher poise set. The axe moveset does not have the best range or the best speed, so I feel like having the poise there to be able to trade with some of the lighter class weapons is definitely going to benefit the class quite a lot. It's hard to aggress. Your running attacks a little bit reactable. The light attacks, again, are not the fastest for how little range they have. So being able to poise tank some of the faster weapons is definitely going to benefit it a lot. To that end, we're also using the Bull Goat Talisman to enhance our poise further, to have 113 poise, enough to tank at least one hit of a two-handed greatsword. I have the Shard of Alexander to boost the damage of the Thunderstorm Ash of War, as that's where all the damage output from this weapon is definitely going to come from. If your opponent trades into this and you time it well, you're going to do so much damage with that Ash of War. And then I have the Crimson Amor Medallion plus two for the HP boost, and the Great Jars Arsenal for the Equip Load boost. As for the moveset, it is an axe, so it does get the standard two-handed light attack chain, which are the diagonal slashes. The heavy attack is the overhead slam, followed by the secondary upward slash. The running light, the horizontal slash, and the running heavy, the vertical slash. I find the running light is a little bit easier to connect with. If your opponent does panic roll the initial part of the attack, you can get a roll catch off that way. The jumping light, the standard horizontal slash, and the jumping heavy, the vertical slash. The backstep running attack, very similar to the standard running attack. And then the rolling and the crouch attack are the vertical slam attack. And then we have the dual wield moveset, which I'm going to be honest, isn't my favorite. I feel like it's extremely slow and really lacks range. I feel like your opponent, if they see you starting up the dual wield attack, they can just walk away from it. They're not really being pressured at all. You can maybe trade into your opponent, but that requires you to have poise. A decent amount of poise at that. So I feel like it's just a very unoptimal attack. The running dual wield attack may have some application. It is consecutive slashes, so if you are pressuring your opponent, you can maybe connect the first one and get the follow-up if you manually into where they're going to be. The jumping dual wield attack is actually consecutive attacks, which can work out pretty well if they happen to dodge the initial attack, you might roll catch them with a follow-up. The backstep running dual wield attack, pretty similar to the standard running attack, just the swinging animation is a little bit different. And then we have the crouching and the rolling attack, which I feel like can be used pretty well. It does lack range, but if your opponent happens to roll around you, you can definitely use that to catch them. The Stormhawk Axe is a somber smithing stone weapon, so it does only have the one Ash of War Thunderstorm, but it's a great Ash of War. If you time it correctly, you get some really good damage off a trade with your opponent. The first part of the Ash of War is the three initial swings, and you can follow it up by activating the Ash of War again for roll catches. Overall, very high damage if you happen to time it correctly. That's all I really have to say about the weapon, though. Let's just see how it performs in the duels and in the invasions. Alright, jumping into our first battle, we have Marigold. Hello there. With the Beast Claw Great Hammer, I like it. Alright, get our buff going. Boiled Crab. Yes. Alright, Marigold, let's see. I recently used that. It actually has some good damage output, and the uh, Ash of War is quite scary. I want to see like if I break poise with this or not. That'll like let me know what I can do as punishes, although I haven't landed any hits yet. Neither has Marigold, though, to be fair. <laughs> Maybe the, okay, well that will probably not hit, no. <laughs> Battle of the can we even hit each other at any point in this match? Find out. <laughs> hey, good dodges. Oh, that was actually hilarious. Oh, okay, okay. Does enough poise damage that Marigold can't tank it. Good to know. Try the R2 as a delayed roll catch. Maybe the Ash of War here. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez, okay well, the entire damage output for this weapon comes from the Ash of War, for sure. <laughs> Maybe a follow up. A very fun fight. Marigold. That's, that's pretty funny, we actually spent quite a lot of time not hitting each other. <laughs> Great first battle though. Moving on to our next opponent, we have Frost. Or Frost. <laughs> Hello there, with the Eleonora Pull Blade. Alright, so bleed build. Looks like some bleed incantations in the off, I mean, arcane incantations in the offhand, I think. I can't really tell. Alright. Let's try the dual wield attacks. Oh, that could have been interesting. Alright, what's trading with us? 
This looks like a good opportunity. <laughs> this Ash of War is actually pretty crazy. Very fun fight for us. I, like, if I know I can poise trade into whatever they're doing, it's just going to do such a, a substantial amount of damage. Coming in is our next opponent, Tardif. Hello there. With a great shield and what looks like a flamberge. Um, get our buff going here. There you go. Uh, okay, so flamberge with shield bash. I want to try out some of the dual move set. We haven't really used it that much yet, so the rolling do wield okay no we gotta make an opening i see that the main aspect of their build is using the shield bash though maybe this could be a decent punish no a little bit too much on the latency for me to get that jumping to wield oh that did hit me okay <laughs> i think he knows i'm trying to space the shield now oh bloody slash that's something different now i have a buff on my weapon at least Jumping light. <laughs> okay. Our latency makes it really hard for me to whiff punish. I'm noticing that. At least with the dual wield, we'll probably go to the one-handed move set. Just because then I'll be able to space it correctly. The shield, huh? There we go. Ooh, that did some good damage and some good bleed build up. Thought I might be able to dodge it. I guess the flamberge also has the bleed, so I need to watch out for that. Oh, <laughs> he traded, and honestly, I don't know how worth that trade was for Tardif here. <laughs> We're both like half health now. I need to not trade into any of the shield bashes anymore. The heavy should work. Oh, that was actually meant to be a backstep attack. I just delayed the, the roll too much. Oh, that was great. <laughs> Very close, very close. Tried to delay the attack there. <laughs> this is going pretty well. Okay, I'm trying to figure out the timing here. Tardif does like reaction roll, but a lot of it is also, there we go. Just because of our ping as well. Very fun fight though. Sometimes I can't get the timing down for the correct, uh, roll catch timing moving into our next battle we have the one the only the link hello hey. there hey. all right now I'm, in, I'm intrigued i don't know how axes are going to hold up against dual great swords since i don't use axes very often this will be an interesting one um okay link does have the poise to tank the one-handed axe at the very least uh i want to try the two-handed just to compare but I'm also very aware of the frostbite. <laughs> Ooh, it's very close. I could roll it. That's actually might be my plan here, to be honest. Just to not take frostbite damage. <laughs> okay. There we go. I was stuck there. I am frostbit. Oh no, he's gonna try to reset it. Ash of War! <laughs> this Ash of War is always so high damaging. That's so much damage. It's actually really crazy. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is what I have as my Ash of War. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was debating using it, to be honest. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, let's go. Compare. Okay, yours be mine. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually surprised that that... Well, this thing actually has a lot of hyper armor for its Ash of War, so I'm 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 kind of surprised. I wanted to see what could go through it, maybe. I don't know. I guess the the Colossal does have a lot of poise damage. Oh, very fun fight, Link. <laughs> uh, Prelit's charge definitely beat the Thunderstorm Ash of War. <laughs> Our next opponent is going to be Ariovis. Hello there, Ariovis. Hey, hey. You have a greatsword of some sort, I assume, and uh, what looks like an offhand something. Can't tell from here, but all right, get our buff going. I'm ready. I have dual axes. <laughs> I think my defense is still high. Yeah, it takes more than just the, the one throwing knife to break the defense of the ring, which is interesting. Let's chip away at it a little bit more. 
Uh, is that a straight sword in the offhand? I can't tell. Oh, enough poise to tank the jumping light. But I did get the damage in there, so that's good. Oh, quick step. That's cool. I can take off my defense ring now. We can go for the Ash of War. Um, frostbite buildup as well. Okay, good. We dodged the Frostbite. That's really the main aspect that I'm going for that. We get the trade with the Ash of War here. <laughs> Honestly, it's so hard to punish that and Storm uh, Assault. Or no, yeah, well, yeah. All the wind ones kind of have like a lingering wind hitbox. It's interesting. Oh, that was good timing. You didn't get uh, chipped by that one. And you jumped my axe right there. <laughs> These have been interesting little interactions. The quick step is very cool though. I like that. Catches me off guard. It's very interesting. Uh, it's like qu he quick steps twice and then goes for the R1, I guess, because it's a running attack if you quick step sideways. I suppose. Follow up. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's a good use for a quick step on the greatsword. Although we're both kind of low, neither of our bubble tiers have been popped, which is quite interesting. Uh, I gotta get closer to Ariovis. This kind of lacks the range that I needed to have to punish uh, backstepping. Oh, the quick step has the good iframes. I couldn't roll catch it there. There we get the trade with this. <laughs> Whoop! Another trade as well. Okay. I need to heal the Frostbite though, because if I take a trade with the Frostbite hit, I think I die. So we're not going to trade with that. Both of our bubble tiers have been popped though. Ooh, down to the last bit of HP. Very close. <laughs> Alright, interesting. I'm going to go away from the quick step running attack. Oh, that still hit me. Interesting. Has a little bit more range than I thought. We'll avoid that, and that would have hit me as well. Okay, so we have some interesting connection here. That's something I noticed right at the end there. These are a little bit more phantom rangy than I thought they'd be. <laughs> All right. We both need to land one more hit. I think I could survive a hit depending on what it is that he hits me with. If it's a jumping attack, I don't think I'm surviving. If it's that, I think I might... That running attack, oh yeah, in particular. <laughs> okay, I kind of have that down now. I think he wants me to attack into the quick step. Needs to be a more of a mix up. Oh, I thought that was the end right there. I was waiting for the hit confirmation, but uh, they jumped it. <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever touch each other. There we go. Very good fight, man. <laughs> the amount of time for it, uh, it took for us to hit each other. That's crazy. Great duel, though. On to our final duel. We have, uh, uh, um, how have you been, man? <laughs> I love that name. It's honestly funny. Oh, Stas the Moonlight Greatsword. Beautiful. I do remember uh, the, the, the build. It was a sorcery build with mostly Moonlight Greatsword use, I believe. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. I have a small little axe, but it packs a giant punch. It is a beauty unmatched. Even like one hit from that does around like 300, although I'm not wearing the Shard of Alexander, so there is that. <laughs> Alright, it seems like jumping attacks are not the forte of the axe. I feel like I'm the one that usually gets hit when we do a trade jump attack, so maybe I'll try the dual wield. The piercer is an interesting one. The dual wield attacks are like, honestly, for some punishes, they're a little on the slow side, I find. Although that was a good one. And I got a roll catch with the jumping light from the jumping heavy. So, not the worst. I can't, oh, okay, I was gonna say, I have to be careful with the Ash of War though, because it can be punished pretty heavily by uh, the Moonlight, I believe. Like the the heavy buff. Although, although I uh, would need the, the sword buff, so there is that. I think I think they want to buff it. Oh, I was debating going for a hit right there. <laughs> Jumping heavy. Oh, I had the poise to tank that. Interesting. That was a different one. <laughs> oh, it's because you needed the FP. Makes sense. Makes sense. Cool. <laughs> Jumping light. 
I'm not sure what we're going for here. Some type of sorcery, though. Oh, that hit me. Oh, that's because of the poise. Sometimes I don't know if I've been hit or not. Gotta watch out for that. Oh, that actually recovers pretty quick. Oh, amazing fight. Oh, <laughs> I thought that would poise break you, but that was a great way to finish these battles, man. Amazing play. <laughs> All right, jumping into the first invasion. Hello, Mr. Wizard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, wait, those died. <laughs> Me! <laughs> oh, that looked like it was going to be really fun. Wait, I guess the host died to the enemy. Uh, unfortunate. That was a team of three. Moving into the next invasion, we are in the deep root depths. Interesting area. Where did I spawn? Oh, okay. I'm across the first branch. Oh, they're madnessing the ants. Hello there. <laughs> Seems like one of the more fun ways to enter a fight. Hello. Dodge the flame. Oh, I was hoping I could do like a jump heavy there down the tree branch, but it didn't work out for me. Oh, you're out of FP player too. You do have light roll though. That'll be a that'll be a tough one to roll catch. I do have my ant brigade here. I don't know where your host is at though. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Uh, there's also a blue that has entered the fight, but... Oh no. How does this do as a wake-up? <laughs> not the best. Oh, they're not gonna trade into it. I really want to see, like, the full damage output on somebody who doesn't have a lot of poise. <laughs> oh, that's cool looking. Give me some here. Okay, we'll go for the blue. I think the blue is, like, half HP. Yeah, we'll get the blue out of the way quick. Dodge the madness snipes. Honestly, killing the phantom here is, is probably going to be the hardest thing because light roll. And these axes already are kind of lacking in the range department. So, I don't see it going well. Uh, getting through the shield is going to be something different as well. Or not. Not the best stamina management on a uh, Kyrick, I guess. <laughs> My Ash of War beats yours! <laughs> Lightning Storm apparently over Firestorm. It's <laughs> funny. That was weird. I wonder why Kyrick stopped running right there. The shield is only effective if you keep it aimed towards where the attack is coming from. That. Oh, I think Kyrick's having packet loss, because. Yeah. I definitely hit during that trade, but... Oh. <laughs> oh no, the ant hit him during the crit! Jeez, these things are vicious. Was, I never really had a lot of fights here. That was an interesting battleground. Very fun fight, though. Heading into the next invasion, and we're at the good old-fashioned Castle Soul. For the update, I used to invade here so much. It's like one of the most active areas. Although, it says I'm close to the host. Where are they? Oh, I was gonna try and drag and fall, save myself some time. <laughs> um, okay, we're heading back to the beginning area. What sort of ambush do you have set up for me, sir? Carl Dejarl, hello there. Oh, you just want to fight in the snowy area? Okay, that's a moon veil. I will be aware. Okay, wait, I think he does have a phantom. Maybe. He's gained HP from what I assume is a PvE dying. <laughs> oh, not enough poise for that. Okay. Because I'm stuck on a rock. Some good old-fashioned R1s. It's really the, aim, the, the range of these axes that limits it, for sure. Unlike some of the higher latency, it is harder to get in on the opponent with certain, like, fast weapons. There we go. They don't do much poise damage either, from what I've noticed. The jumping attacks are definitely the go-tos for me. Maybe the backstep dual attack. That's still a little on the slow side. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll reset for him. Hey, 
Maybe he'll get aggressive. I'm expecting at some point the Moon Veil, Ashivor, you know? At some point. There, why did that do so little damage? I feel like his regular R1s did more. Maybe he like somehow clipped me in the air weird. Very fun fight, Carl. That was strange. I was expecting half my HP to be gone. All right, jumping into our final invasion, and we're in Faramazula. Oh, I think they're right above me, oddly enough. Well, actually, I don't know how high above they are. That direction, so... I wonder if I can see them on the roof from here. Maybe. Oh, hello! Wild Articuno. Oh my god. Okay. Pokemon cosplay. Alright, Articuno. Are you ready? Moonlight Greatsword. Uh, wait, that is the Moonlight. Yeah, yeah. What, what else could that be? Oh, sometimes the, having the poise to tank a Greatsword really throws me off. Because I think I've dodged it, then I look at my HP and I'm like, oh, I did not dodge that. That was an error on my part. Took a trade. I don't know how in my favor that was. Go with this. See if uh, Articuno jumps into this. <laughs> I wanted to jump it. It worked, but I didn't get a punish out of it, so. Ooh, almost the back step roll catch. All right, maybe we'll do wield now just to throw off the timing, even though the do wield is a little bit on the slow side. Might trade into it. Yeah, there we go. That worked out pretty well. Very fun fight, Articuno. You were definitely one of the cooler flying Pokemon. Well, those are all the battles that I have for you guys for today with the Stormhawk Axe. I hope everyone enjoyed the showcase. Once again, there's the stats on the right, the armor that I wore, the talismans that I utilized throughout the showcase, and of course, keep dropping your weapon recommendations below. I really love reading through them all. They help me plan ahead for the videos and remind me of weapons I'd otherwise forget, so I do appreciate it. Until the next video, though, this is goodbye. Thanks for enjoying the series. I will see you all next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.